this moment, the only requirement for this moment is that you have put your faith in Jesus, that you've said yes to what he has done for you, his finished work on the cross, because we are all part of God's family. We are all sons and daughters of God, and everyone is welcome at One Hope to partake in communion together. I love this so much. I was thinking as I was preparing for this that Jesus was just coming together and having dinner with his friends. It was such a beautiful moment of what communion really is. It's a coming together of us as a family and partaking in this beautiful sacrifice that Jesus paid for for us. So we're here today continuing that moment, coming together as friends and family to commune together, to take this, the most important meal of your life. So important that Jesus, even after the original supper that he had with his friends, after his resurrection, he came to a man named Paul and had this incredible encounter with him. And Paul wrote most of the New Testament. But Jesus told him, this is important. And in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. On the same night in which Christ was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And a few weeks ago, we talked about the importance of this moment, how holy it is, like the, the power that is in this moment for your life. See, Jesus didn't just die to wipe out your sin. He also died for your healing. And in this moment, partaking of this meal, there is healing here in this place. And all it takes is faith. The Bible says that we were saved by grace through faith, that not of ourselves, it is a gift of God. And this moment for you is a gift. He paid for this for you. So if there's any kind of healing that you need in your physical body, in your emotions, in, in any type of area of your life where you need healing, today is your day. Today is your moment to say yes and amen to this promise. Lord, we thank you for your broken body. Lord, we thank you that we, we here today are determined that the fullness and the power of the cross will be operating in our lives. Lord, wherever healing is needed, we say yes and amen to that right now, Lord. I thank you for people who are suffering in their physical bodies, Lord, who are dealing with mental stress or depression or anxiety, Lord, um, emotional stress. Lord, we just thank you, God, that you came so we could be whole. You were broken so we could be made whole. So we thank you for wholeness, nothing missing and nothing broken. In Jesus' name, amen. And at this table that we're at today communing is forgiveness. Jesus, the Bible says, he didn't just cover our sin, he wiped it out. The handwriting of requirements that was against you and was against me, he nailed it to the cross. He became sin so you could become righteous. And in this moment right now, what we're doing is remembering. The Bible says that Jesus told Paul, I want you guys to do this very often. Do it often and remember what I did for you because when you know that you're righteous, the enemy can't have a hold on you. When you know that you are a son and daughter of God, that you have sonship, the, the enemy cannot, he can't have the victory in your life. You have to be reminded that you are, you get to come boldly to the throne of grace. You get to find mercy and grace to help every single time that you need it because of this blood. Because of this blood, you stand here today fully accepted by God. I want to tell you right now, there is nothing that you have done or nothing that you will do that will ever change that. You are fully accepted by God because Jesus is fully accepted by him. And as he is, so are you in this world. So right now we're going to take the blood. Here we go. <laughs> and we're going to raise our glasses to the captain of our salvation. And we just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that was shed for us so we could be part of this incredible family, so we could come around this table today that you've prepared for us and find joy and find peace, find love and acceptance. We thank you so much that, for the power that is in this blood, that it truly has transformed us into new, new creatures. Old things are passed away. All things have been made new because of this blood. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, good morning. Welcome to One Hope Church. We're so glad that you came to worship with us today. Take a couple minutes, find some people around you and say, man, you look great today. Good morning, One Hope. How are we today? Are we doing, I heard the word wonderful, I love that. It's a great descriptive term over here somewhere. Uh, man, would you, uh, <clears throat> would you do me a favor and stand to your feet this morning as we sing happy birthday to my be beautiful wife? Happy birthday to you. Happy. Come over here. Come over here. To you. Happy birthday, Pastor Jennifer. Happy. Be embarrassed. Yeah. It is still okay to have fun in church, right? Man, I'm so glad to see a lot of faces in this place that I have not seen in a little while. My friend Arnold is here back there. Good to see you. Molly's here. She's here somewhere. She just went to the restroom. And uh, man, it's so good to see you. Look at your neighbor and say, man, you're looking good. Look at somebody you don't even know and say, you are looking good. You are looking good. I want to say a special thanks to my friend Kevin and his team. Uh, his team's been walking around. He's back there. They've been walking around doing some filming today. So thank you for your understanding. Thank you for your participation. Uh, he, he owns a, a multimedia company that does marketing and web design, and they're helping us out with, uh, with some refreshing branding for this place and some video production. And, and uh, we've gotten to know each other. I feel like we're fast friends. We had a good time. We, we like to eat Mexican food together. Right? So, so, yeah, man, thank you guys for being here. And, and uh, I just want to say how much we love this house. I'm, I'm probably going to cry today, but we'll see what happens. Uh, if you have a Bible, turn with me to Genesis chapter 22. This is week number three of a mini-series that we've called the Sermon on the Mount, but it's not the Mount that you think. It is the Mount called Mount Moriah where Abraham offered his son Isaac in faith to the Lord and became the father of our faith. And so it's important to us uh, to remind ourselves why we are people of faith and how powerful and meaningful faith is in our lives. And so today we're going to finish this mini-series. And um, somebody spilled communion juice up here. It's okay, it's somebody's birthday, so we won't say anything about it. Pastor Jen did such a great job last week um, bringing, the, bringing this message, the second week of this message. We've talked about, you know, some ideas like uh, uh, the fact that God is a God of promises, the fact that, that Abraham often built altars to the Lord in order to praise God and remember what God had done for him. And, uh, and last week she, she brought us this amazing message. If you didn't catch it, check our YouTube out. And watch that message in the week before because, man, they are, we are here to help you. And I believe that living a lifestyle of faith is, is well, it's needed today. <laughs> it's needed in this world. And, and, uh, and Pastor Jen talked about things like trust produces endurance. It produces words of faith. It produces worship. Trust produces full surrender. Even after last week, we talked at the house and we were thinking, you know, there are still things in our lives that we have not surrendered to the Lord. That we have not given over to the Lord in full assurance, full faith, full persuasion that not only he can handle it, but that he wants to help. God is love and he wants to help. And so we're talking about this big picture idea of faith. And so I think that as we finish today, I think that to me there are uh, three main points to this story that really will tie this Old Testament story into this New Testament lifestyle that we live. Okay, this New Testament lifestyle that we live, there are three main points, and, and we'll see those in just a moment, right? This is a story of faith tying you, say, that's me, say, that's me, 
tying you into the family of God. We don't come to this place just to check a box off that we showed up and, and, and went to church this week. We don't check a box off. I, I read five verses here. Check the box. This is an actual relationship with a living God who was raised from the dead to absolutely change your life. And your job is to believe. You don't get more points for showing up to church, but show up to church. You don't get more points for giving, but give. This is a relationship. Those things come out of relationship. Right? We want to be here surrounded by this amazing family of people because we know what God has done for us in our lives. Not because it's the right thing to do. I'm, I'm here to celebrate. Listen, I know the old me. I'm celebrating. That This one's different. This one's different in actuality. In, in moving through this life, we talked about just this lifestyle of faith being a journey. Right? It's not some place that we arrive. It's just trusting God in this life. And so today we're going to talk about a proving, a giving, and a rising. And we're going to see all these things in not only the Old Testament and the New Testament. Right, My job today, my job today is to persuade you that because God gave you Jesus, he is trustworthy. Who has trust issues? It's okay, raise your hand. <laughs> Saw somebody in the back row just be like, <laughs> right? Listen, listen, listen. The world's not perfect. The church is not perfect. God is perfect. And God can be trusted. And if you sit here today with me and just listen for these next few minutes and understand that God is trustworthy, your life will change. Father, I thank you for this time together this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this environment this morning that you and Holy Spirit are cultivating this morning. Speak to your people. Speak to those who need to hear your voice. Speak to those who need a change in their life, Lord. Comfort them. Guide them. Help them understand that they're forgiven and loved no matter where they are. Thank you for this beautiful, beautiful time together today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I feel like I need to uh, say something that Pastor Matt told me last night. In all seriousness, did you hear how the software engineer caught a cold? He left a window open. Ushers lock the back doors. <laughs> no. I got to give credit where credit's due so you don't think that all my jokes are bad. These are jokes. These are bad jokes given to me from other people, and I just regurgitate them and lay them out there for you. Uh, right? But I believe, I really believe, I'm no, you know, all joking aside, that God is doing something here today. I was, I was praying the last few days and just un- understanding that the Lord is, is going to speak to you on a personal level. And some people in this place need to step one foot into this relationship with God. Some people need to run. Some people need to sit down and just receive rest. We're all at different places. But today, God is going to speak to you through the scriptures. Today, God is going to speak to you through the scriptures. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. Now, it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham, and he said to him, Abraham... And he said, here I am. Abraham's just a guy, you know. He's just like, he just hears the Lord's voice. Abraham. He's like, here I am, Lord. Then he said, take now, listen to these words. Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. And I think it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful part of the story because, I mean, it starts off crazy. Because we understand as some of us in this room are moms and dads and have had kids. And, and we understand that God is saying, hey, take your son to a place that you don't even really know yet where you're going. But just trust me. 
and give him as an offering. And some scholars think that he, he at that time was probably either between the, uh, a, teenage, a teenage year, like 13 to 15, possibly even into his 20s. But it's amazing to me that that word in the Hebrew, that word for tested, is actually to prove. Which is an, it, takes, it takes the story a, a turn there. Because God is saying something and asking him to do something that would prove who God thinks he is. God thinks he's a man who trusts him. God thinks he's a man who will do what he asks because he's built this relationship with the Lord, like Pastor Jen said last week. Over time, from Genesis chapter 12 all the way to now in 22, God and Abraham are walking together through this life. And God sends him from a place called Ur to this place called Haran, and then from Haran down again to another place called Canaan, and he says, just trust me. Sometimes we want to know, where exactly will I be going, Lord? What address should I be at? I need specifics, God. And not only that, but he's asking him to give his most prized possession, the son whom he loves, is what the Bible says. And so the first thing I want you to remember this morning is that this story shows a proving. Tested is the Hebrew word nasa, which mean, or nasa, which means to try or to prove. See, God was testing him here with the expectation that he would pass the test. Did you catch that? To prove means that you're going to make something happen that you think is going to happen. Scientists prove theories, right? Do you understand that? He's expecting Abraham to believe because the Bible says that he's proving him. It doesn't say he's tempting him. It says he's proving who he is. Abraham is known as the father of our faith. I grew up in West Texas. Woo! San Angelo. I know there's somebody from Midland back here, right? Abilene. Or, oh, we got a lot of West Texans in this room. Let's go. And uh, my, my dad and mom and sister are here in the crowd, and, and dad owned a freight, there he is, dad owned a freight company for many, many years. And uh, we used to work, we used to deliver freight to this place called the Goodyear Proving Grounds, where they actually tested tires on these tracks, and they would send trucks and cars all over the highways around there uh, for like eight-hour shifts where people would just drive and drive and drive and drive, and they would prove how their tires would perform because it was known as the proving grounds. And we would often take uh, checks there and sometimes tires and all kinds of things for them to prove what was happening. Goodyear employees were testing their tires with what? With confidence, I believe. That they're going to perform like they knew they would. You don't build something and be like, throw it out there. We'll see what happens. You look like you need more coffee today, Bill. Did you design this? Or? They're proving what they think is going to happen will happen. What's amazing to me is that we're going to see these three ideas in the Old Testament story of Genesis 22, but we're also going to see them echoed in the New Testament in the life of Jesus as well. We see in John chapter 18 where Jesus is arrested in Gethsemane, and, and, and what does Peter do? Peter stands up, draws his sword because the, the servant of the high priest who is trying to arrest Jesus, and Peter strikes the servant of the high priest and cuts his ear off. And what does Jesus do? He heals him and says, put your sword away. So, so Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? Shall I not prove to you and to the Lord who he knows I am? A man of destiny, a man of sorrows who would, I can do this. Who would go to the cross for us? Should I not prove 
what is already in me? Christ is rising to the occasion to change history in this moment. He could have run. He could have fought. He could have said the wrong thing, but he didn't. He proved that he was the Son of God. He proved that he was going to be the once-for-all sacrifice on the hill of the skull for you and for me. It was a proving. He proved himself not only to the Father, but to you and to the whole world so that God's family would grow. He did that so he saw you when he was on the cross. And he gave of himself. He proved who he was so that you could have a way into God's family. 2 Peter 3.9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and believe in God. In fact, I love this. Pastor John used to say this all the time. I believe that Christ so faithfully passed the test that God wrote, because of what he did, God wrote your name into the book of life. That's mentioned in Revelation at the end of the Bible. God wrote your name into the book of life, and it says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 5, He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before the angels. When you believe, God is, tr- God is believing that you'll believe. He wants you to say, yes, I want to be in that family. Your name is in the book of life. I don't want to blot your name out of the book of life. Because of unbelief, I believe you're going to believe. Jesus. You overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by, by the word of your testimony. And there is a story this morning in the proving. Because Abraham proved who God thought he was, and Jesus proved whom he knew he was. There's a proving in the story today. There's also a giving, secondly, say number two. There's a giving. Verse 5 in Genesis 22 said, Abraham said to to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, like Pastor Jen mentioned last week. And we will come back to you. Not I will come back to you after I offer this boy, but we will come back. He trusted that God would make a way. He trusted that he would walk back to this place with his son and move into the next phase of life. Abraham made the decision there to trust God. He had, I believe he had in his heart, believed that God would do exactly what he said. That he would use that boy to affect the rest of mankind. Just like that promise in Genesis 12. He says in verse 17 of 22, Blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which was on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Right? Abraham was willing to give his most valuable possession. Some of us in here have a car that we really like. Or a musical instrument that we love. Or a house that we poured our heart and soul into. And this man was giving his son because God asked of him. And the relationship that God had built for ten chapters into this moment is the foundation of faith by which he would stand in that moment. Even after a time between when God promised and Isaac showed up, Abraham's like, how's this going to happen? <laughs> Maybe I should try to make this happen. We talked about last week. Sometimes I believe we've got to force the Lord's timeline. Make it more of our timeline. But really, I'm often reminded now about how, how culture works today, right? It's, 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 uh, it's, it's a forced reciprocity, right? You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. 
I do something for you, you owe me. It's hardly ever, let me just do this for you. It's hardly, let me just show you love or say something nice or do something. It, it's, it's, it's microwave. It's, it's, it's crazy fast driving. It's, it's, it's like, oh, so many thoughts. Can't put the phone down. It's just life, life, life in your face. So it's refreshing to hear stories of people giving with no expectation of return. No strings attached. I'm doing this because this is who I am. God did this because he is love. No strings attached. And we're like, that doesn't make any sense. Because you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Or I know that I need to do something to receive what you're giving me. Because I don't want to feel like I owe you something. I need to give you something in return, right? Right? This, this doesn't make any sense to the worldly mind. I love this book. There's a book called The Go-Giver that I've read a couple of times, and a lot of, a lot of people on our leadership team have read it. And there's this amazing story where it's this young businessman, and he's, he's trying to climb the corporate ladder, and he's trying to do everything that he can do to make himself seen. And, and, and it doesn't really matter who uh, gets in the way. He's, he's going to get his, and he's going to climb that ladder. And it's just like the world. And this mentor comes to him and he says, there's this really cool connection. And this mentor just starts talking to him about these amazing ideas. And it's not really a Christian book, so don't, don't get me wrong. It's just like a leadership business kind of book. But this guy comes to him and he says, he says listen, you know, basically sometimes you just need to do the right thing. Do, do things without expectation of return. And so he has this call, and he, and he takes this phone call late in the afternoon on a Friday, and he's, his numbers are down for the quarter, and he's not going to bonus. Anybody ever been there? And, uh, and, and he feels like the pressure, and he's just like, man, I'm a failure. I don't even know how long this job is going to last because it is not working out. And he takes this phone call, and this huge client says, man, I, just, I, I had to call you. I hate to say this, but we're going to move in a different direction, and we're not going to go with your company. And so he loses this massive sale. And he's just like questioning who he is and just can't get over himself. But he remembers his mentor's words who says, who said, uh, do something without expectation of return. Just do the right thing. And they're ringing in his mind and he says, you know what? He, and this is the time when they had Rolodexes. Does anybody know what a Rolodex is? <laughs> Dated reference right here. And, uh, but he, but he, he says, you know what, uh, I, I understand, I, I really wish it were different, and we would love to get your business back, but let me, let me give you this guy's number, I think he can probably help you. And he actually gives a competitor's number to the guy, to the client. And it comes back at the end of the book to, to be like the biggest bonus that the guy uh, gave in that moment. With no expectation to return, just let, let me help you out. I know this doesn't make any sense, but I have this guy's number. He's actually a competitor, but I really think he can help you out. And he just did the right thing in the moment. Yeah. And it came back at the end of the story where, where he was, uh, praises were heaped on this man as well as other blessings yeah. were heaped on this man. Because of a giving. Because he gave with no expectation of return. And see, Abraham gave, the Bible says, his son, his only son, the son, son whom he loved, in his heart and his mind, he gave him to the Lord. He said, I don't know how this is going to work. Some, somebody needs to hear this in here. I don't know how this is going to work, but I trust God. I don't know how this is specifically, the, the steps are going to be ordered, but I'm just going to step back and trust God. Yeah. All I know is that we will return. Yeah. Right. We will return. We will be back after we go yonder and worship. And so he gave. But listen to this. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 7, it says, When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, 
And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. This is God's beloved Son given to the world to change the direction and the trajectory of your life for eternity because of a giving with no expectation of return. God wants you to believe in faith, this sacrifice. He wants you to believe that Christ died for you. He was buried, and on the third day, he rose again so that he can bring you into this family. I know that every single person in here wants something better. Nobody in this place is is sitting and saying, you know what? Oh my gosh, life is perfect. I, can't, I cannot even believe this. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. But the fact that God has more for you, it just takes a moment. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send Jesus, his son, into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. See, I believe that God used Abraham's decision to offer his son. God used that as quote-unquote human legal entrance into this earth to offer his son to you. He saw that faith that Abraham said, responded with. And he'd given, at that time, God had given man authority on the earth, so he took that authority back as soon as Abraham said, he didn't take it back. He responded. He gave mankind authority on this earth, and when mankind responded in faith, that gave him entrance. It says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 12, Therefore, one man, say one man, one man, and him as good as dead, therefore from one man, and him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars in the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Hebrews chapter 11 is called the hall of faith, and it mentions Abraham and Sarah. It mentions Abraham twice and Sarah once. So faith is pretty important. Because there is a giving. We talked last week about you giving things over to God. That doesn't happen until you respond by, to what he's given you. It really doesn't happen until you respond. You respond. It doesn't happen until you know how much you are loved. It doesn't happen until you connect your, your faith and your heart outside of these thoughts in this mind. You can read this all day long. But nothing's going to change until faith rises up in you. That's why this is a relationship. Nobody should tell you how. This doesn't look like anything. It doesn't look like the person sitting next to you's journey. It doesn't look like a journey of faith of your mom or your dad or your spouse. This is your specific journey. Don't look to anybody else. I think that's why we have a problem in this earth today. So people are wondering, how do I do this? Tell me what to do. What do you do? No, no, build this relationship with Jesus in your own heart because of a giving. Number three, a rising. Genesis chapter 22, verse 3. So Abraham rose early in the morning. This is interesting to me. You said last week how tough that would be. After God had told him what to do, what did Abraham do? He rose early in the morning. All right, I'm going. I'm on the way. I think I would sleep in, I would feign sickness, I would call somebody, come over here and come up with something, I I don't want to do this. But Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose, isn't it interesting that he split the wood there and then they loaded the wood and took the wood to the offering site. And arose and went to the place 
of which God had told them. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw afar off. Abraham rose early in the morning, and that in itself was an act of faith. That in itself was the beginning of this whole process. But remember, he had built this lifestyle of faith. What I love about Abraham is his lifestyle of faith is not perfect. There are little bits of humanity sprinkled in between Genesis chapter 12 and Genesis 22 where Abraham's like, now, uh, I don't really understand what's happening here. Can you help me? You said this, but I'm not seeing this happen. But he keeps walking down this path of faith. He keeps trusting God and saying, God, you said, so that's all I need. I think there are people in this place today that, that say, need to say, God, you said, and that's all I need. Yeah. Take the processing out of it. Yeah. Take the emotion out of it. Yeah. Just say, God, you said. My response is to trust. My response is to be the, 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 uh, the word for faith in the Greek in the New, New Testament is pistis, which means to be persuaded. This is a lifestyle of persuasion. It's not a moment of persuasion. Moment after moment. This is a lifetime of persuasion. That term rising. What does that term bring into our minds? Usually it's like something good is going to happen. Like a phoenix rises from the ashes. Right? SpaceX rises from the platform into the atmosphere. You watched it. I know you did. I watched one where they had an abort, and I was like, man. I waited for an hour to watch this, and then they were like, never mind. We're not going to do it. The weather's bad. We think thoughts of, like, promotion and victory and, you know, something good happening. And when I read this, when I read this as a dad, I feel for Abraham. Because I don't know how hard that was to rise early in the morning and respond that way to God. Some nights, I'll sit at home and watch YouTube boxing fights. Anybody with me? You like boxing? Yeah? Sometimes we like to watch boxing late at night. Pastor Jen may fall asleep after after we watch our cooking shows. And then she's asleep on the couch, and I'm watching boxing. And man, and what do you do? Like, you, I'm always rooting for the underdog. Somebody that gets knocked down, I'm rooting. Get up! Yeah. Get off the mat, man. Come on, let's do this. You can do this. Rocky Balboa. <laughs> Come on. Right? I, I want to run the steps in Philly. The gray sweats and everything. Like, we're doing this. Like, get up, man. You can do this. But, man, this is not cliche. And this is not corny. But there's an even better rising. And some of us in here need to make this personal today. Make Jesus rising from the grave. Equate that into your life for change. Make it a personal part of your story. Tell yourself, I'm not going to walk in here next week the same as I did today. I'm connecting in my heart. God is doing something today in this place, and He's speaking to me. Abraham rose in the morning before the sacrifice. Jesus rose in the morning after the sacrifice. Matthew chapter 28, verse 5. The angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. For he's risen. He is risen. The one in whom we are to put our faith was raised from the dead. So that you'd have a second chance. So that you'd be a new creation. That you'd have a new life. 
so that the things that often drag you down from day in to day out would just be dealt with and leave because you trust in a God who was crucified, died, buried, and rose again? Because you're persuaded that that life change starts with this story? Because you trust with your heart and your spirit, not simply your mind? I think we got to get the mind out of the way. Get the mind out of the way. Respond with your spirit. Respond with your heart to what Christ did. There was a rising. The angel said, he's not here. He's risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you'll see him. Behold, I've told you, right? Christ rose in the morning after the sacrifice, right? There's a story in the rising. I believe your story is in the rising. I believe today that you need to connect your story into this rising. As Jesus rose up from that grave to give you this new life, you need to say, I need that. I want that. I'm tired of this. I want that. Why is it that that person sitting next to me is always smiling? And I'm like full of inner rage and bitterness all the time. Why is that? Well, I would dare to say it's because you don't know you're loved. Because you don't know you're forgiven. Maybe you read it, but you haven't experienced it. And so today, take that and say, you know what, I, 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 Lord, whatever you got, I want it. I want this to be a place where people come in every week and say, guess what happened? Yeah. Guess what happened this week? You'll never believe it. I got that promotion. Yeah. That ticket went off my record. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> my daughter. <laughs> but better yet, man, you never, you'll never believe I got this amazing chance to talk to somebody about the Lord. I, got to, I don't even know what came over me. Like, I've never done that before. I'm not comfortable talking about Jesus. But I got to encourage somebody at work by saying, hey, listen, I know today, well, I was going to use a different word, stinks. But listen, I, I truly believe that God is for you, man. Can I buy you a coffee? Or better yet, can I just pray for you right here? Let's just make it awkward. Can I just pray for you? I want you to have a better day. I want you to leave, go home, and feel better with a smile on your face. That's what God wants for you. Why not spread that? There's a story in the rising, but this man, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12, this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. See, I want to tell you this morning that your faith in Jesus is the foundation for change in your life. Let me say it again. Your faith in Jesus, not your faith in how well you act, not your faith in how well you manage your money, not your faith in this and that or the other, but your faith in Jesus is the foundation for everything. Because, I know this, in Romans 8, 32, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? How shall he not give us all things? He gave us the most important thing. So all the things that come along with that are just beautiful. Life-changing, right? Religion and condemnation tells you that you either did wrong or you didn't do enough right when something happens in your life. How many of us have asked that question before? What did I do wrong? Lord, I don't know why this happened. Or what didn't I do right enough in order for this to happen? Religion wants you to think like that. Religion wants you to question who you are. They want you to question... Back up. Religion wants you to question your identity. I must not be blank a child of God because blank happened. 
And that shouldn't happen to a child of God. So what did you do wrong in order that that would enter your life? You know what? Life ain't perfect. Jesus told us. But the purpose is that we live a lifestyle of faith connected to him because we know in the bigger picture we win anyway. That doesn't always help in the moment of trauma or distress. But it should. When we connect our hearts with faith to a God who rose from the dead for us, man, that should minimize everything else. See, religion is simply a distraction from the truth that Jesus did it all. That he did it all. That it's no longer on your shoulders. That anxiety, that condemnation, those thoughts that are plaguing are not true. So your faith in Christ is the stabilizing factor, right? I believe, I truly believe it is. It is, it's always been and it always will be what Jesus did. It's never how good can you act. How much can you pray? How many songs can you sing? That is not it. The Bible calls those things vain repetitions. If you do that and there's no relationship rooted in, in your faith with Jesus, none of that matters. Those things should be a response to this relationship. For you to get vulnerable enough to say, you know what? I need this. I need you, Jesus. Christ rose from the dead so that life would change. Listen to this, John chapter 14. This is right after, let me, let me find this. It's in the Bible. We're in John chapter 14. I think the guys have this on the screen. Yeah. So in, in 13, uh, a few verses before in 36, it says, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him and said, <laughs> Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward. I love how Jesus responds to the, guy, the disciples all the time. Like immediately confusion. <laughs> what? Oh, but I thought we were going to dinner. No, no, you can't follow me now, but you can follow me afterward. Right? And so he says, Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to act what's right. I'm going to act like a Christian, even though there weren't yet. Jesus answered and said to him, Will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow until you have denied me three times, Peter. Sucked all the air out of the room. But what's amazing is, and translators inserted a chapter break here. Chapter 14 starts in verse 1. It's typically where it starts. In chapter 14, Jesus' response to Peter is what? Oh, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled, Peter. You believe in God, believe also in me. Oh, there's the difference. You knew a God. You read about a God. You performed for a God. Believe in me. Believe in Jesus. Believe in the Son of God standing right in front of you. Believe in this relationship, not the performance. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again. And receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. 
and where I go, you know, and the way you know. And then Thomas speaks up and says to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. This is so confusing. We don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? And then Jesus said to him, I am the way. You stick with me. You stick with me. Don't worry about jumping through all the hoops. Don't worry about the performance. Don't worry about what somebody told you to do when you're supposed to go to church and pray an hour every day and do this and this. And that. Don't worry about that stuff. Just stick with me. I'll walk you through this life if you be bold enough to accept me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It is Jesus. It has always been Jesus, and it will always be Jesus that is the difference. And some of you in here today need to give yourself over to the Lord. Some of you need to say, you know what, I'm confused. I don't know what is happening, but Lord, I'll stick with you. Today needs to be the response. Today needs to be the, the, the day that you move out of your head space and into your heart and your spirit response. Where something changes in you. Because you've lent it over to the Lord. And you say, I'm, I'm willing to walk. I've tried to walk this thing. I can't do it anymore. Let's bow our heads. I want to pray for you this morning. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I believe for, for a long time that, I just believe the, <laughs> the church has missed some things. Sometimes even remove the relationship and instead inserted processes and mechanisms. But it's always been relationship. It's always been a relationship. It's always been Jesus. And maybe you're here in this place this morning and one of these scriptures spoke to you. The way Jesus talks about you, the way Jesus is so accepting and loving and gave himself and forgave this earth. That's you. And I would say to you this morning with, with, our, you know, with our heads bowed that if, if you today know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you want to be in God's family. It is as simple as this. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord of my life, that you'll spend eternity in heaven. And I'm telling you, this decision is the best decision you will ever make. Because it starts your new life. If you're sitting in this place this morning and something from these scriptures, something I said, something from these passages resonated with you and said, I need that, slip your hand up and let me pray for you this morning. If you're sitting in this place and you said, I've never trusted in Jesus as my Lord and Savior, slip your hand up and let me pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, relationship starts right now. You may be sitting in here. If you're still in here in this place, raise your hand. If you've not raised your hand yet, relationship starts today. Relationship starts today. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to lend you these words. Say these words after me. Say, Father, I want to thank you 
for giving me Jesus. I believe that he died for me and he rose again on the third day. And today, I make Jesus king of my heart and Lord of my life. And I believe I will spend eternity in heaven with you. In Jesus' name. Why don't you guys give the Lord a great clap this morning. We had, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's, there are some relationships starting today in this place. There are relationships starting today in this place. Don't leave this place without connecting with somebody. Don't leave this place without getting prayer from some, one of our team members back at this kiosk. I feel like there's somebody here today that's been battling this overwhelming feeling of confusion, just this big overwhelming feeling of confusion in life. If that's you. Would you slip your hand up? Yeah. Let me just say, I got this image where it was uh, like a playground and a merry-go-round, and, and once you get on a merry-go-round that's spinning, you don't typically get off unless you're chunked off, right? But, but what's amazing is if somebody reaches from the outside and stops it, then you can walk off. And I feel like the Lord said to you that that, that is going to happen for you. That is going to happen for you. And, and I want you to know that the, that the Lord says don't try to, to manufacture the process by which things slow down and stop. Just let me do it. Hand it over to me. And let me do that for you. He loves you so much. You're not made to just limp through this life. If that's you today, I believe the Lord brought you here specifically to speak that to you today. And I believe you're going to walk out of here different because God met you where you were. Amen. Amen. We're going to take a few moments now to transition to the end of the service. And we're going to have... Oh, we need to, yeah, we have to uh, get the, the kitties. I don't know where they are. Oh, they're coming. They're coming. So, okay, here we go. I'll just leave this. Thank you, Pastor Derek. That was good. That was a great word. I woke up this morning, and I put my, I checked all my, was checking off some of the red dots on my phone. You know what that means if you have an iPhone, right? People have <laughs> red dot anxiety. And uh, I opened an email, and the very first email, it said, proven. Uh, and it was a company, and I was like, you know, getting rid of my junk mail. But I opened it because it, it spoke to me. And then, um, not the email, just the word. <laughs> Uh, but but interestingly enough, the other red dot that I need to check off, there was a chat in there from you, Pastor Derek, this morning, and you were talking about your slides, and I was like, and point number one was proving, and I was like, all right, God, what are you doing? This is cool. When I think of proving, we're going to transition. Let me just do that first. We're transitioning to generosity. This is uh, the part of our service where we get to honor God with our giving and give generously into the house of God. And um, these are the ways that you can do that. You can scan this QR code, it'll link you to everything. But if you need an envelope, uh, you can raise your hand and our team will get one or to you or you can, and then you can uh, hand it off on your way out the door. But when I think of proving, think of testing, and um, the scripture that comes to mind is Malachi 3.10, which is an old scripture. It's in, the, it's in the Old Testament, and it was put in there talking about uh, the legalistic approach to, to generosity, but we live in a grace uh, post, post-cross world, and so that, that was a, um, a legal, obli- what was a legal obligation is now a grace opportunity to give generously. And so I, I was 
I, I did not do well in math. I uh, had to take remedial math in college. But um, I'm an actress, so there's that. Um, uh, but, but what I did learn in remedial math <laughs> was about proving theorems, pro uh, um, proofs and theorems. And I, and I was looking at what that, the breakdown of that word, and it says um, to prove is to show the logical explanation of why this theorem is true, and the theorem is the facts and the statement. So Pastor Derek was hitting all of those points when he's talking about what God was trying to do through Isaac and what God's still trying to do in your giving and what he wants to do in your finances and what he wants to do in your home is 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 prove to you that he is your security, prove to you that he is enough, that he will meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory, that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So that means that he will handle your finances. He will handle your generosity. So when you are a seed sower, you will be provided seed always. That scripture um, in, in different passages, it says test, it says try, but the version that says prove is out of the um, guitar one, Amplified Bible. That was an old Pastor John reference. So uh, it says bring all the tithes into the storehouse, the whole tenth of your income into the storehouse that you may, that there may be food or provisions in my house and prove, test or try me now by it said, uh, says the lord of hosts if i will test me now if i will not open up the windows of heaven for you and pour out the blessing that shall be more room more than enough well, wow shall not there shall not be more room for you to contain it he wants to do that he wants to demonstrate to you he wants to prove to you he wants to show you that he's got you covered so when you give today, give knowing that. Give knowing that he has provided that seed for you. Uh, I'm going to just pray over your seed right now. Father, I thank you that this is good seed going into good ground. And I thank you that you've given us richly. That's it. You've just given so richly to us. And I thank you that we'll see those harvests come to pass, that it's more than we can contain. It's more than we can, we can uh, imagine. And I just thank you for what you're doing in every home. I thank you that you are continuing to provide seed to these sowers. I thank you that this is a generous church. We love you and we celebrate and we honor you today with our generosity in Jesus' name. Amen. A uh, couple of things I want to remind you about. We, uh, we have new devotionals, so make sure that you're getting these. These slip into my Bible so easily. They slip into my purse so easily. They slip into, I saw Papa Tom Miller has a satchel on today. This will fit right in it. Uh, anyway, they're very handy, and, and I have valued the wisdom and the insight that goes into uh, that comes from from whoever sat down, and so we're going to do this together. We're going to read through the Bible in a year, and I'm going to give you give you instructions and steps to be able to just sit with the Lord. So I encourage you, if you're not reading these, do it. And if you and if paper's not your thing, that's okay. You can get them in the app. Our app has all of all of the content from our our devotionals available to you. Um, I want to just stop for a second and have you in, and have you watch the screen. I have a quick video for you. Yeah, so next weekend, uh, one, one week's time is what he said last time. Um, next weekend, he, 
uh, Pastor Jeff's going to be with us, and I don't know if you remember when the Gilpins were here or when Misty was here, Misty Westland was here, but it, it is um, an opportunity for us to be impacted in a, in a way that is different than what we normally see. And I encourage you to come and bring somebody with you because he has been, Pastor Jeff has been praying about delivering some something very personal and very special to our church. And I do not, um, I do not want you to miss out on that. I think that there is something very significant. We get a lot of wisdom from the people down under. All those, all those Aussies and New Zealanders that have come and imparted wisdom into our, in our into our house, um, is for right now. But it's, it's also for, it's right now for our church. But it's for you personally. And so I want you to to make plans to be here, uh, in one week's time. And um, I want to invite you to our, uh, our, yes, this, okay. I want to invite you to join us at Unity Conference. So Pastor Jen ministers to women all over the place, and she's been invited to speak. And so we want to go, and we want to support her, and we want to rally with her and celebrate her, and uh, we want to invite you to be part of that. If you scan this QR code, um, we, we have limited spacing, about 10 spaces for uh, an overnight outing. Now it's in Durant, it's not a far, it's not a far trip, so you can, you can make the trip there and back in, in, you know, after service if you want to, but if you would like to stay and have a, have a sisterhood slumber party, then um, you can register here. The cost will be minimal, but I don't think that's been assigned yet, so it'll be, but it'll be less than a hotel room split four ways, so that can't be in Durant. Okay, so like it's not gonna be that much, um, but we want you to come and party with us and and let's celebrate um, being together as women. And we'll take we'll take a little sisterhood road trip, yeah. And then I want to just uh, encourage you to join us uh, next month. We're going to be doing another worship in the round. Those experiences are so precious. Um, there's a few people here that are are here. Uh, that showed up for the first time during worship in the round and they just stuck around. So thanks for staying because it was a unique, unorthodox service and we love being able to see what God can do um, in, when we shake up the setting and we shake up the, the way we roll. And uh, I want you to come and be a part of, of those, but uh, just making sure that you know that that's coming up next month. We, we'll do these a few times throughout the year. Worship in the round is so special. And then um, I think that's everything for me. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Derek and Jen and our Generations team. They're doing incredible things. You guys give it up for our Generations team. So this week is Promotion Sunday. So we were going to have all of our kiddos who are promoting to the next grade level. Some of them are going into youth. Some of them are going into kids' church. Look at these beautiful faces. Yeah, and then have any of the school, if, you're, if you are still in junior high, high school, elementary school, come up here to the front. We want to pray over all the kids as they're going into their school year. Let's go ahead and stand on our feet, everybody in the room, and we're going to stretch our hands towards the kids. As they embark on this 2023 school year, I can't believe it's already time for school. How did that happen? Look at all these babies. You want to pray over them, Pastor D? <coughs> well, let's stretch our hands forth. Father, we thank you for each and every child that's here, God, that you have a special calling upon all of their lives, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are leading them and guiding them on this journey that they have with you. And Father, I just thank you for every entrance and every exit that these children go in and out of during the school year are protected by you. Lord, I thank you that you give your angels charge over them to keep them in all of their ways. Your blood cleanses them and covers their lives, Lord. They're taught by you and great is their peace. And Father, I just thank you that they are a light that shines in the darkness. Lord, that their voices will impact people. Lord, that whenever they speak, Lord, that, that they, their friends will hear the love of God coming through their lives, Lord. And I just thank you, Father, that 
each and every one of these children, Lord, is confident in who you have made them to be. Lord, that they know how loved they are by you. Lord, that they will do great exploits. <laughs> Lord, we don't despise their youth, Lord. We, we know that you can use anyone for your glory, Lord. And I just thank you for each and every one of these children being used by you this year to change the world around them. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we thank you for this service today. I thank you, Father, for the reminder of how much you love us, Lord, that you, through this life of faith with you, you're proving who we are and who you are, Lord, through this relationship of trust and faith. Lord, I thank you that you have given us everything when you gave us Jesus. And through that, given us the ability to walk out this life in victory, to walk out this life in peace and confidence and love. Lord, I thank you as we go from here today that your angels go before us preparing our way. You give your angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. The blood of Jesus cleanses us and covers our lives. All of our children are taught by the Lord and great is their peace. Your Holy Spirit teaches us all things and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. <clears throat> Sorry, we're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in our baskets and in our storehouses. Everything that our hands touches prospers because you've made us to be the head and not the tail, above only, never beneath, first not last, victors no longer victims. You cause the mountains and the hills to break forth into singing and the trees of the field to clap their hands as the people of God go forth with joy in the matchless name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.